Welcome to the fasting podcast, Wow, Wellness and Optimal Weight. I'm your host, Julie Phillips, certified natural health professional for two decades, bringing you episode 144, Insights on Protein Diets. Let's talk about protein. I urge you, no matter what you weigh, use a body composition scale to see whether you are in a normal range, a high range, or a very high range of muscle percent. Of course, you're going to be looking at your body fat and visceral fat numbers also, but we're focusing on protein in this episode. And there are protein diets that a lot of people will poo-poo, but many people do not consume, digest, and assimilate enough protein for their bodies. People with heartburn are especially at risk of digesting and assimilating issues. Some vegans and vegetarians are at risk of not consuming enough protein. Some keto advocates are focused on fats and at risk of low protein. So what's made of protein in the body? Well, almost everything vital, muscle, bone, eyes, heart, liver, other vital organs, connective tissue, ligaments, skin, hormones, neurotransmitters, most of the immune system, and the list goes on and on. The famous Adkins diet from many years ago was deemed by many to be unsafe and with many lawsuits. And this was a diet that, as many of you will know, was heavy, heavy on the meat protein, not even organic meat proteins, but just lots and lots of meat and even a period of time when you weren't eating any vegetables at all. Very acidic and very prone to being dangerous for the people with blood sugar issues was something called ketoacidosis, the very dangerous aspect that that could put you at risk for. A protein-focused diet that uses plant-based protein isolate already broken down, almost pre-digested, some regular protein and veggies and salad type food daily came from Europe and Canada into the U.S. many years ago, and I was a guru in the entire U.S. on this plan. Women consistently for years, like they did in Europe, lost three to four pounds per week off the scale of fat. Men, five to seven pounds or more per week. And this was like clockwork. I personally lost multiple pant sizes in a matter of three weeks. I watch people measure with expensive devices, some only affordable by doctors at that time, that would measure actually how much muscle mass and fat you had, not just percentages. And these expensive devices proved that act of gaining pounds of muscle mass rather quickly without working out. Also, the phase angle, the health of the cells, the vibrancy of being able to recover from serious illnesses also improved. And people like clockwork on were saying goodbye to major blood sugar and blood pressure challenges. And all the while, the people are getting better energy and more sleep. And this was a protein-focused diet that I personally was the guru, and I trained coaches in the United States. Fasting advocates are aware that protein can stop autophagy, the Superman mode, and we did do an episode on that. But if you're doing a water fast to get major autophagy for recover from a serious issue in your body then you still need to pay big time attention to what we're going to share in this episode on protein. So most of the time, people shouldn't be focused just on whether or not something's going to stop autophagy, but all the other very many major benefits. So first and foremost, measure where you are in the range. So you can get a body composition scale on Amazon for less than $30, And besides showing you what body fat and visceral fat and where you are in the ranges, ensure that you personally, even if you think yourself very thin or anywhere in between, ensure that you have either normal muscle percent range or high would be even better or very high. Now I'm going to give you one example. I have the chart on my website that we'll mention at the end. 
but the chart shows you that for females and for males, the skeletal muscle percent chart reads like this, and I'm gonna use as an example, females age 40 to 59. The normal range is 24.1% to 30.1%. That's the normal range. And you'd want to at least be in the high end of the normal range, not the rock bottom where you're going toward low muscle. The high range for the females age 40 to 59 is 30.2 to 35.1. And very high, which is the super best, is greater than or equal to 35.2. Men obviously are gonna be having more muscle. They've got their own chart on this page. And this page also shows you visceral fat clinging to vital organs and the body fat percent, what's normal. So if you wanna get a copy of that, you can just Google on the internet or check this out in the slides from the episode that we're working right now, 144. Now, if you're not where you wanna be in those ranges, determine if your personal issue is consumption, are you not eating enough protein, or are you not digesting and assimilating? For example, if you have heartburn reflux, then you might be the digesting and assimilating need. So check out episode 19, Heartburn and Fasting. Let's talk about some more tips on protein. If you're not happy with your muscle percent, review episodes 9 and 10 on protein. These go together as a pair and they talk about how much you might want to be consuming and also plant versus animal protein. Meat-based protein usually contains hormones, steroids, antibiotics, which can wreak havoc with their help and is much harder to digest and assimilate and has an acidic effect on the body than plant-based protein. So I would suggest that you consider organic plant-based protein powders, and these can be made of pea protein, hemp protein, that type of thing, which are easy to digest and assimilate, easy on the kidney and liver, and they have a more alkalizing effect than regular meat-based proteins, animal proteins. However, I do love, as you know from the episode on eggs, I love organic eggs, but they have very little protein when you get down to how many grams. If you choose something like protein bars or protein packets, where you might mix a packet and it becomes some kind of food, maybe even a chili or a jello or a dessert, watch for unhealthy ingredients. So you don't wanna be seeing uh, like aspartame, you don't wanna be seeing a lot of these ingredients that you can't pronounce and you definitely don't want to be seeing high fructose corn syrup in there or these other fake artificial man-made ingredients that could be dangerous. You want to also watch if you're going to choose some of those added sugar and the amount of net carbs. What's that? You take the total carbs, you subtract fiber and erythritol, allulose, the natural sugar alcohols don't count in the net carbs that are gonna affect the pancreas and the storing the glycogen. So be aware that you need to be very careful if you're gonna choose those kinds of foods. And if you choose them just to lose weight, then really don't be propagating bad ingredients once your weight loss is achieved for life. Eat healthy, organic, natural ingredients. With the protein, consume plenty of low carb organic veggies and salads and some organic fruit. Some people say never do fruit. Uh, I totally don't believe that's true. I think you can go too extreme on this keto concept and I've done episodes on that. Variety is very beneficial. Now, some people like to eat the same thing every day, but it's really good to get different nutrients and variety in your food that you're eating. If your blood sugar challenged, monitor very closely the desirable effect that protein isolate can have on your blood sugar. So that protein diet that I was a guru of, people would watch their blood sugar plummet sometimes and their doctor would say, hey, we're gonna change and reduce your amount of medicine that you're on for your blood sugar problem. And this happened 
to type 1 and type 2, not just type 2 folks, but the type 1s that wore an insulin pump, they would say, wow, when I used the protein isolate powder, I actually used much less insulin, sometimes none, which was pretty amazing. And these were the type 1s were the little kids who got it as children. And if you have trouble with satiety, which is a feeling of fullness, review episode 116 on satiety. It talks about fats, carbs, and proteins because proteins are the best at satiating you. Uh, And then fats are second. If you need reshaping of your body, maybe your waistline, different things, you could lose And I watched people do this, including myself. You can lose multiple sizes in weeks. I think I lost like three pant size in three weeks on this program many years ago without very many pounds lost. Sometimes people would say, wow, I only lost this many pounds, but I lost this many inches. So you always want to measure your inches and see what works best for you personally. Everybody's different and measure on the body composition scale, not just in the beginning to see where you're at, but then as you're progressing on things you think are good for you, measure again periodically to see if your muscle percent, for example, is improving and going up instead of going down. So protein plans, they might help tighten up saggy skin, make more ATP, that's adenosine triphosphate, ATP energy in the mitochondria, cellular batteries to give you more energy and to do more repair. It can improve your health big time. So a lot of people are poo-poo on protein diets, but I can tell you I have direct experience where this is a very important and valuable topic to consider. For questions and feedback, contact me, Julie, at jpwowprograms.com and That's the site where you could get a copy of that little chart. Please refer others to the podcast and YouTube because we don't advertise it. Stay positive, focused, and determined because where the mind goes, energy flows.